My name is Alyssa King. I am a local senior banker and also I just started my new business, Senior Tech Safety, where I come to local seniors' homes and help them with technology, either as simple as turning on a laptop or computer to figuring out how to work an app, deleting a browser, deleting things, anything you need help with. That is basically what Senior Tech Safety is for because as a banker I noticed a problem. People come in and businesses expect you to know and understand how to do things online and that just doesn't come naturally to a generation that didn't grow up with it. I'm 35 years old and I think I grew up with technology. I was in the first s classes of school that got to bring a cell phone in. I mean granted they weren't the cell phones we have now but I grew up with the technology so I got to see everything evolving. Anyone over my age you did not grow up with this and you didn't have it so it's a serious problem and I don't really see a solution happening anywhere so that's why I started Senior Tech Safety so that I can go to people's homes and help them with whatever they need no matter what it is just like a technologically savvy personal assistant is kind of how I like to phrase it for people. So. This is my scam awareness presentation. That is another huge problem that I noticed. And because of how bad it's been, I'm at the bank, you know, 40 hours a week. So I am seeing, you know, half of my day is on the phone with the fraud department, just trying to help people figure things out because the scams are getting really bad. And it's affecting and targeting seniors in this area right now. And I see it every day. So I feel like everyone should just know this information but if no one tells you, you're never going to know. So that's why I do this. So let's start with, has anyone here ever been a victim of a scam? Yep, about half the people here, I would say. Usually, the people that show up here have already fallen victim to a scam. So if you haven't yet, I'm very happy that you're here because it can affect you. You hear some of these stories, you may think, oh, that would never happen to me. I would never fall for that. But in those moments, in those moments, it feels real. They get you going, and that is what they use to manipulate you. So, the five most common types of scams that I see are gift card scams, this one can kind of cover all the scams as well because it gets involved in everything. We have grandparent scams. I don't know if anyone here has heard about those, but I have a good story, or a sad story, I should say, about that. It was horrible. Romance scams, we see that as well. And that doesn't necessarily mean a boyfriend or girlfriend. It just means someone that you're intimate with. A close person could be a caregiver. IT scams and also OTP emergency scams. OTP stands for one-time passcode. That is something that is being used frequently now for dual authentication. So that's something I'll go over as well. A lot of changes are happening to banking apps and every app you use. They want to make sure that it's really you signing in. So they're going to have you put your password and then they're gonna send your phone a text message with a six digit number or a four digit number and you have to punch that in. So that's what a one-time passcode is. Now, these are just some facts about what's been going on with scams. Now, in 2021, there was over 90,000 older victims of fraud resulting in 1.7 billion, billion, in losses, and that's a 74% increase from 2020, because guess what happened around then? The pandemic, COVID, that's what happened. Everyone was stuck home, everyone was stuck online, and these scammers took advantage greatly. Just scams specifically targeting seniors has more than doubled since 2020. More than double. It's almost at three times the amount of scams targeting seniors just in the last three years. And fraud affects not only your financial health, but your overall well being and could potentially lead to insomnia, loss of appetite, depression, anxiety, relationship difficulties. At the bank, we get to witness that firsthand because they're just starting to deal with this fraudulent situation blaming each other. Why did you answer the phone and give them this information? 
why did you use that website and make that charge? It, gets, it causes a lot of turmoil. And then just simply being a target of a scam can change someone's outlook on the world and affect their mental health negatively, obviously. People get actually depressed. You don't trust yourself. Your family doesn't trust you. They think you need extra help because you decided to give out your social on the phone to the wrong person. But these people are very convincing. You don't have to be a senior to be scammed because I deal with people getting scammed of all ages, but they are targeting seniors and in this area specifically. So more facts is these are all really sad. So <laughs> it's horrible. It's really bad. And I have to see it, which is why I do this. But feeling shocked, hurt, or even traumatized, anger, embarrassment, and a sense of denial are all normal emotions to have. I'm like half therapist at the bank, usually, because it's where you have to figure out and deal with. You're just finding out how bad it really is. $10,000, $13,000 just gone in the blink of an eye because you, you talk to the wrong person or you let the wrong person try to help you on your computer and they remote it in and got your banking information. You have to be careful who you give your IP address to. So, I'll get into that as well. Yeah, I'm gonna get into that as well, I know, I know. I like to throw the words out there so at least you're thinking about it. But an IP address is basically a, dig a long digit of numbers that is access to your computer. They can, physic, not phys they can remote in and see everything that's on there and take over your entire computer if you give them this information. And they can walk you through how to find that number very patiently and calmly and nicely. And they're going to sound like a customer service rep. And you think you're on the phone with someone. That will get there. <laughs> But it can also cause you to go to drugs and alcohol. That was what the last thing said. Because it, it really does affect you emotionally as well. So this, we're going to start with gift card scams. They're usually someone pretending to be a company or a government agency. They may say they're calling from Medicare. They may send you an email that has Medicare's logo. They might say they're from Microsoft because they want to remote into your computer to help you out. They found out you have a virus. It's going around. Or there's a bug going around. They need to remote in to fix it. It's going to say Microsoft on your caller ID. It'll show Microsoft's phone number because they can do that now. They can do that now. We have people that will see our local bank's phone number, our local bank's name. Sounds like a local bank rep. They know what we say. And that's how they get your information. I'll tell you how to prevent that. They may threaten to take legal action if something is unpaid, like taxes or fees, and they need payment immediately. It's always going to be urgent, and it's always going to be something that gets your adrenaline going, and you're going to be amped up, and they're going to scare you. They're going to say, listen, the police are on their way. There's a warrant out for your arrest. You have these unpaid taxes for 12 years. You know, we tried calling you, we didn't get a hold of you. They're coming right now unless you go get six $500 gift cards and drop it off at the mailbox at the corner. That is what they're going to tell you. And in that moment, that might sound crazy right now, but in that moment, it doesn't sound so crazy. And you start to question, oh my goodness, do I have taxes that are unpaid? I don't even know who to call to figure that out. And then you panic and you, your blood's pumping and they make it urgent. They make you feel like it has to be done right then. They use fear, urgency, and emotional manipulation to get you to do exactly what they want. Now this one is grandparent scams. These ones are brutal. They are heartbreaking. I've cried so many times with customers because it is just horrible. Someone will call you posing as a grandchild and they're in this dire situation. It is something horrible, and you're talking to them. You think you're talking to your grandchild, but they sound a little funny. Why do they sound funny? They were in a car accident, and they broke their nose. And every time it's they were in a car accident. Last one I had, she had a grandson who was transgender. They called her and said, I was in a car accident and I hit a pregnant woman in front of me. He was in college, just went off to a different state to college. And this poor woman thought she agreed to a non-disclosure agreement over the phone. She was shaking, 
trying to take out the $10,000. And we know the red flags. We know what to look for. So I sat her down. She didn't want to sit. It was a, it was a force. She did not want to. She was terrified. You could see that she was terrified. So finally, after sitting with her for a few minutes and getting her to at least tell me she agreed to the non-disclosure, I was able to say, okay, let's, let's talk about this. And her, I got her to tell me that they said he was in jail and if they didn't, she didn't get them X amount of $500 credit cards to this location to pay the attorney, he was gonna go into general pop and they'd probably kill him. They would beat him to death if he got there. That's what they were telling. And she thought she already agreed to this legal non-disclosure. She was terrified, but when I could tell her, did he sound funny? Was he in a car accident? Did he break his nose? Before she could tell me, that was when she finally started to divulge some information. But in those moments, it is terrifying. I said, did you call him? Did you call his mother? Did you call his father? No, they told the non-disclosure, I can't. I can't call them. I can't. He'll go to general population if I speak to anyone. Attorneys aren't going to get paid in gift cards. I said, let's reel it in. Let's think about it. No attorney, that's illegal. They can't do that. I don't think they can do that. I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but that doesn't sound legal to me. And that when you think about it and you sit down and you're not in that moment, but if you don't have someone that knows these things and knows the red flags right there with you, there's a good chance that you could divulge some information. And they, she must have said something because they told, they said to her something about being transgender. She must have gave them a bit of information that she didn't realize. And when they said it to her, that's when she believed them wholeheartedly because you accidentally give up your own information without even realizing it. They may be arrested, that's one, injured, it's always the car accident and broken nose because they sound funny, they don't sound like themselves. And then stranded in a different state or a foreign country. If anyone's calling you and they need money urgently, I know there are family emergencies, there are things, but you know, you know if it's a weird one and you get that little weird twinge inside like this doesn't feel right, Take a breath and think about it. Do your own research. Never be afraid to reach out to family or friends to verify information and figure out what's going on. They usually will say you're the only person they can trust. Please don't tell mom and dad. Don't tell anyone. You're the only one and now you feel special. Now you don't want to break your grandchild's heart. They go for the emotions. That is what they do because they know you're good people and they're not and they're just bullies online and I dislike them strongly, and that's why I am here doing this. And so more scams that they do, if you can't figure it out from the picture. This one's gonna be about the romance scams. So they target people who are more trusting or reliant on others for assistance. This, again, doesn't necessarily mean boyfriend, girlfriend. They build up a false sense of trust over an extended period of time. Maybe you met someone online and you've been talking to them and they're a friend. Now they're a friend. You know about their kids, you know about their family, you see their pictures, you chat daily. How are you doing? You share intimate things, your feelings. Six months later, their mother's in the hospital and they just want to take a cab to go see her and it's, you know, 40 bucks, they don't have it. Just something small, simple. You'd ask any friend for 40 bucks and you give it. And then a couple weeks later, oh my goodness, she needs surgery now. I don't know what I am gonna do. What am I gonna do? And you, this is your friend. You've just been, you've, they're not a scam. You've been talking to them for six months, a year now. They're doing this with 50 other people to have different time ranges going, different relationships going. This is their job. This is their job. And they will build that relationship, take the time it needs so that you don't even question it for a second when it comes time to ask you for money. And that's what's scary about these things. Romance doesn't mean you're in love and boyfriend, girlfriend. It is just the intimate situation where you care about someone or someone's caring for you. And then that makes it a lot harder to deliver the fact that this is a scam. I have to tell people, they no, it's not. You don't, you don't know her. You don't know him. You don't know our relationship. 
but I know the situation very well. And the Reliance scams perpetrators pose as caring friends, family members, caregivers, romantic partners. That's the thing, family members as well. This is where it gets really hard at the bank. We don't, you know, elder abuse is something we have to report legally. And elder abuse doesn't mean someone punched you in the face necessarily. Elder abuse happens in many different ways and family can take advantage of you. They may not even realize that they're taking it. May, they may not think they're taking advantage of you, but it happens. And you need to just be aware and be careful of how much you're giving and who you're giving to and for what reasons. It gets a little weird at times. Money and family is always messy. It is just always messy. So you just have to be careful. Your family, obviously, you know them, you trust them. Make sure that continues in a positive way throughout your life. And just always know that you can get a senior advocate to come and speak to you. I'm trying to become a senior advocate. I feel like there's not enough advocates for seniors right now, and there's a lot that's needed. So I, I'm trying to do something. So. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now this one, I like that picture. I think that one's funny. <laughs> IT scams. We talked a little about this earlier. They will pose as tech support. They'll pretend to be Microsoft or Apple. And again, they can have the caller ID say Microsoft or Apple. Now what you should do is call that number back, or not that number, call a number you trust back always call back. If you hang up on your bank, if someone calls you from the bank, feel comfortable to hang up on them and call the local branch because they can make that number show up on the caller ID, but they're not going to be the ones answering that phone number. Always call a trusted number. And the IP address, again, that is a very important number. Do not give that number out willy-nilly, okay? IP address is access to your whole computer. And these hackers and scammers, all they need is a few seconds of access. And you'll know it instantly. I've had people come in just devastated because they knew that they messed up because the second they gave this information over, all these boxes just started appearing on the screen and things were downloading. And he didn't know what was going on. So he shut the computer off but they got access to like his home internet. They got access to every, his banking information. They got everything. Anything that was on that computer, they got access to. He had to redo and start over on everything. The poor man, and it takes so much time. It usually takes at least three months, two to three months, especially if you're receiving social security, because they take a little bit to fix things. So. You're looking two to three months before you can even close a fraudulent account, but you'll have a new one open, but you'll have to transfer money, come to the bank, have it unblocked. It is a huge process, sometimes very annoying, especially if you've had your bank account for many years. So it's a pain, a little bit. Now, you also need to be aware of phishing emails and phone calls. These will appear to be from a legitimate source, like a bank or government agency. Again, with that caller ID, it's going to look and sound legit. Um, they're going to request personal information. And especially right now, they are sending out fake order confirmations, <coughs> fake tracking information. It'll be a fake email from UPS. Hey, we have your package at the facility. We need some extra information to get it to you. We just had a fake phishing email sent to work that was that and I happened to just have sent out a, an order which I never ever ever do but now we're going to have uniforms so I ordered one and that came the next day and I almost clicked it and I was like ooh don't know and I didn't and I reported it as phishing and thank god I did because it was and those are out there a lot right now a lot especially during the holidays and these people they'll send out 2,000 emails with the click of a button all they need is one person two people to click it and give the information, and they're gonna get plenty of money for that day. If they get the information they need, they can quickly get what they need. And it's very sad. Did you have a question? No. no oh, I'm sorry. Everything you've mentioned has happened to me in the past week. Really? See? Pop up ads. 
It's, yeah, I know. And then there's websites where you're not sure if they're real or not, if they're a scam or not. There's one right now a lot of people ask about is Timu, because I see that pop up for me a lot, and they have super cheap items. What I like to say is if it looks too good to be true, it is. It is probably too good to be true. It, and I don't want to sound negative, but honestly, online, better safe than sorry. Just pretend it's not even there, because it's probably not real. Or it's like coming from China and it'll arrive in four months, one or the other. So online shopping scams are everywhere. And a one way to look out for a legitimate website is look for websites that start with HTTPS and then the colon slash slash. That is usually a legitimate website. That does not mean it's not a scam necessarily. It's just more legitimate than the websites you see that pop up, like 12.zyx. Something that looks weird, just get out of it. You want to go to www websites, normal looking websites. That's another way to just keep an eye out, at least. And then there's social media scams. There are catfishing scams where people will take your friend's photo from their Facebook, create a whole new profile, friend request you, and then they're asking you for money. And you don't realize it, but it's not them. Yes? Yeah, so I've just gotten one that's slightly different, and it's actually sort of live. It just happened a couple of days ago. I gave, I fell for it, and I gave my email and the password. It was an invitation, and I followed mm -hmm. the link and said, to open the invitation, give your mm -hmm. email and your password. And since it was a friend, I gave <laughs> Change my password. What else can I so, do? What happens with that one? Now, with that, that what that sounds like is just that's the website trying to get your email. They want you to that you created an account with that with that uh, got holiday card website. They made you give the email and create a pass. That's what it sounds like, at least. Obviously, I'd have to see it, but now you'll probably receive promotional emails from them because now you have an account. I'm if you don't, for the next thing to happen. I mean, nothing bad has happened yet, but I mean, I, uh, at that you changed but, your password already. Yes, that should be good. I mean, is you there can, anything else to be if done? you want to go to the website, you can unsubscribe from them, and you know, either delete the account. You could. There are ways to do that as well. It looked like it came from my friend. It might have. There's a chance. See, that's the thing. Not everything is a scam. Sometimes it might just well, be it a did, friend. Because I talked to her. She said it didn't. No. See? Oh, phishing. So there's the thing. There are legit, because I get cards sent to me. I get e-cards sent from family sometimes. And you open it up, and it says something. And it, that does happen. And they will ask for a, uh, email and password so you can sign up for their website. And that's all legitimate things. They're not scams. But that might have been, that was probably a scam. That was phishing. That sounds like a scam. I mean, are they going to study all my I mean, my contacts. if I mean, you have changed your password, that's what you should do. That, that's basically the first thing you should do is change your password. What site, uh, they, you gave your email, the email, password to your email? Yes. <laughs> okay. And you changed it. I mean, that's what you have to do is change the password. One thing is to change your password frequently. Like, once every few months. I know it is annoying. No one wants to have to remember some new password all the time. We're forced to at the bank, but you should be pay changing passwords regularly. So that's another thing that I'll talk about. Let's see. And then also with social media scams, there's Marketplace. That's another one where I'll see several people posting the same lot of pictures, and it's a scam. They're trying to get people to prepay and reserve an item. They don't have these items. They are just taking your money and scamming you. And then always be careful of who. You have to make sure you're talking to your actual friend, especially if it's a new profile that pops up, if there's not a lot of friends associated with it. If you speak to your friend and they say, yeah, I had to restart my Facebook, fine, great, that's awesome. But otherwise, you really should be cautious about who you add, what you share, all of those things. Now. These ones are the emergency OTP scams. Excuse me, I need my coffee. <laughs> so again, OTP is one-time passcode, and that is what they'll send you 
when you're trying to get access to a website. This one-time passcode, if you give that to the wrong person, will give them access to whatever you're trying to log into or whatever really they're trying to log into. Usually what I see is it's the bank calling you and they noticed fraud. You just got a $2,000 charge on Amazon, but we didn't think it was you, so we're holding it, but we need to authenticate you. So we're gonna send you a one-time passcode. We do that. That's all normal stuff that the bank does. And they send the passcode and then they say, okay, read me the passcode. You read them the passcode. Doot, doot, doot. They are now in your bank account. Now, if no one tells you this, what I'm about to tell you, you would never know. Specifically at the bank I work at, I cannot speak for all banks, but I know at least for the one um, that if we call you, we know who we're calling. We pulled you up in our system, we pulled your profile up, we dialed the number that was there. We know who we just called. We don't need to authenticate you because we called you. If you call us, that's when we'll need to authenticate you because we need to make sure who we're talking to. What these scammers are doing is calling you and asking for that passcode. How the heck would you know? Oops. How the heck would you know that you, we're not going to ask if we call you, but if you call us, then we will do it. You wouldn't know that. I didn't know that for a period of time, and I worked there. So I was telling people, we will never, ever ask you for this number. Never. Don't ever give it to anyone over the phone. We're not going to ask for it. And then one day I had a problem with my credit card, and I had to call the bank. And you know what they did? They said, I'm going to send you a one-time passcode. I said, no, you're not. What? I said, I work there. I tell people every day that you're not going to do this. And they said, oh, well, you called us. We need to know. We don't know who called us. We need to verify you. I didn't even know that, and I worked there. How would anyone else know that? I worked there, and I didn't know for a period of time. I mean, this one-time passcode stuff, again, it's all very new. Technology is moving very quickly. Do you know dual authentication and biometrics and there's all these different ways of now gaining access to someone's account, trying to prevent people from gaining access, but then scammers are finding ways to use that and figure out a way to do it that way. Because technology is growing so fast that I feel like no one can keep up with, they're right there at the same pace. Everyone's learning at the same time. So those scammers are figuring out how to take advantage of new programs and new systems while they're trying to figure out how to stop them. And it's just been such a fight and the scams are getting worse and worse and happening more and more. They're gonna pose for these emergency scams. Again, it's gonna be like a trusted agency, a family member, or a member of law enforcement. I saw a police officer got scammed the other day. His wife made a post about it. They thought they were getting arrested. They thought he didn't show up for court and someone was coming to bring him in for a bench warrant unless he paid something over the phone. He had to have his spouse call someone on the other line to verify, thank God he did, because he wasn't even sure if he was getting scammed or not. He thought he was on the phone with his work, the police station, the police. And that's who we call when we have these problems sometimes. You call your bank, you make a police report. It happens to all of us, everybody. Asking for financial help, like things like legal troubles, medical bills, or possibly travel expenses. You may think this is a legitimate person and they have some type of fee, they need help, they need this. These people are very convincing. And in those moments, when you are just listening, you're, they are believable. And they make you act quickly. Obviously, they're trying to force you without being able to verify the situation, one reason or another, it's you have to act now. You need to do it right now or else something bad is going to happen. If you don't do this this second, everything's going to go wrong. Nothing, everything's going to, you know, I can't do this, this one can't get surgery, my mother's going to die. Something terrible is going to happen unless you can give them $500 right now. And you know what? You're probably caring people and you might give it. And they know that. They know that. They could say they're from a, a volunteering place. They could say whatever they want. You may think you're donating to a charity. It's really sad what they're able to do. And this is their job. They are doing this all day, every day to people. So 
If you don't fall for it, the next person will is how they look at it. So now we'll talk about ways to try to protect yourself, prevent falling victim to these things. We have gone over some kind of while I talk about it. But you want to verify the caller. Call a trusted number that you know. Again, don't be afraid to hang up on your bank, especially if they're calling you and asking for that personal information. Feel comfortable hanging up. They'll make a note. If it's real, they'll make a note. The next person should be able to figure out what's going on. So always be cautious and you have to check for yourself. Don't ever be too scared to look into it or call your family member or call your son, call your daughter. Don't ever be scared to reach out to your family. I don't care what these people say on the phone. Never be afraid to call your family. Always do your due diligence because you're the only person that's going to be able to help yourself in those situations. And they get scary. They're terrifying. People are shaking and crying when they come to see me. It's horrible. So I know it's easier said than done, but you need to try to maintain calm. When you hear these things, just take a deep breath. Try to stay logical and not emotional. It's really hard to not think with your emotions sometimes, especially when families involved like your grandchild, if you think your grandchild's in danger or hurt and needs surgery, or who knows, it's the doctor calling. We, I can't get a hold of his parents and we can't perform the surgery without a $5,000 deposit. You're not gonna say no to that. You're not gonna say no to that. Of course you're gonna do it. And in that moment, you're terrified, you're crying. You think your grandchild's about to die on the operating table. He's in class, he's fine. He's, he's in class, that's why he didn't answer his phone when you called too, because that's happened, he didn't answer. Well, let's call someone else, call the mother. Call the father, call the cousin, call everyone before, do your due diligence. Don't just give it up. It's very hard in those moments, but you need to just try to remain calm and don't rush into those decisions. Don't <laughs> rush. That's what they're working on, that's what they do. Immediate, right now, has to happen. If you don't do it this second, something terrible is gonna happen. They don't want you to hang up, because probably their chances go down if they don't get the money the first time on the phone. So they're gonna try to keep you on the phone as long as they can until they get that money. And they're gonna make you feel like if you hang up, he's gonna die. You have two minutes to make this decision, that's it. You know, you can't call anyone because you're the only one that can answer this question. You're the only person. And they get you going and that's how they do it. They're really, really mean bullies. <laughs> and also secure your personal information be cautious what you share on per social media. Don't post you're going on vacation for a week, that your house is gonna be empty. That one's kind of a well-known one, but you don't wanna let people know you're not home. You wanna be careful, like I don't post my daughter's school. You know, you gotta start to be careful about stuff these days. The world's different. It's just a different world we live in. It's not, it, it's evolving. Everything's evolving. The scams are evolving. Technology's evolving, everything. And quite quickly too, I can't keep up. I'm only 35 and I, I, this is my first PowerPoint. I mean, but the thing is I grew up with technology so I could whip this up in a couple hours. Not even, you know? And I've never done a PowerPoint before this. I never needed to. I grew up with the technology. It was kind of before PowerPoint was a thing. So it wasn't needed for me in school. So I never had a use for it. And then I was coming here and she said she had the way for me to do the presentation this way. And I said, all right, cool, I'll do it that way. So I whipped this up and but that's the thing. I don't know if you could whip up a PowerPoint if you needed to, but that's what senior tech safety is for. And the, some questions you've had about deleting browser history and going to the settings, there's no way you would naturally know that. And a lot of people, all the answers are online. Go online and figure it out. Oh, just go to the website. If someone told my mother, that's another huge reason I started the business as my mother, don't get me started. But she is a little bit technologically not savvy, so. Use strong passwords. This is more good practices for staying safe. And I know it's not easy to remember a password that's a bunch of numbers and letters and capitals, but you want it to be weird. You want those capital letters to be strange so, so no one's gonna know. You don't want it to be your last name and the year you were born, because guess what? People can guess that. Don't have it be, I mean, I'm, I'm a, 
I'm like a painter that doesn't paint, you know, paint their house. I'm a banker and I, I don't, my daughter's birthday is everything, you know. It's just, we always do it. The numbers you know, but you need to try to change it. Don't use your social, don't use your date of birth. Don't ever use those numbers for anything. Just don't. It's not good. The bank won't even let you use that as a PIN. It will decline those PIN numbers because it, that used to be your login information was your social security number back in the day. Now, no, not at all. Absolutely not. Don't use it. We won't allow it. So that's one thing. Also, the two-factor authentication on devices. You've probably seen it if you have a cell phone, if you use any type of apps, but when they ask you to log in and then they want to verify you another way, can we send a text or call this phone number? Can we email a verification code to this one? So you need to pick a way to have your dual authentication done, so two ways to authenticate you. Now, giving those numbers out, that's when you need to be cautious because it's dual authentication. So if, it's this, if you're getting an email with that <coughs> six-digit number, that means they already have the login. They're already past that part. This is all they need. This is the second step. And if they're reaching out to you looking for that PIN number, that's, that's they're this close. That's all they need. And once you give it, they have all the access. They can just boop, boop, transfer it right on out of your account. That's it. And you know what else? When you give your information to someone, that's not fraud. When you give your information, now there's different situations obviously, but if you give your card number, if you give your debit information to someone over the phone and tell them your information and then they, it's not what you thought and they scammed you, that's not fraud. You gave this person your information. You're not gonna get your money back. And I, I feel bad and horrible and it's not up to me. That's just how it is. If you give it, they didn't steal it. You willingly gave them the information. That's where it gets tricky. And then with these online things, you sign up, you check a box. A month later, you get another $40 charge. Wait a minute, what's that from? I didn't order anything. You just subscribed. It's monthly. You check the box. Because you couldn't make that purchase without checking the box, because that's their terms and conditions, you know, the stuff that none of us ever read, that box. Yeah, it was in there, and you checked it, and you entered all your information, and then you clicked, yes, make that purchase, I agree. And then the next month they charge you again, and then you can call and cancel, and maybe there's a fee, maybe there's not, maybe you can fight them and get a refund for a month, but the bank's not giving it to you. We're not gonna, you signed up. I mean, you can come and try, and then we'll reach out to the company, and they'll send us that little picture saying, look, they checked the box. They, they entered it all right there. You have a question? So legitimate businesses mm -hmm. that want you to pay, want you to give access to your account, Xfinity, mm -hmm. Comcast, uh, uh, the electric company or whatever, mm -hmm. they want access to your account so they automatically deduct from your account. Mm -hmm. Using HP, uh, Harvard Pilgrim, they got scammed. And we would, so, so there's legitimate businesses out there mm -hmm. that get scammed oh, yeah. and, and allow, somehow allow access to our accounts. Yeah. If you don't do it their way, it's more difficult to do business with yep. them. And a check is easy to scam too. You send a check instead of doing it that way, there's no. a lot of that going on. It's Christmas time. I've seen a lot. They strip it and they'll change it. But I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, there was someone, I had to close an account yesterday because someone had signed up with a company and that company had gotten scammed. She was uncomfortable because she knew her account information was possibly out there. Nothing had happened. She had heard it on the news. Shut her account down. Do I recommend doing that? I don't know, not always. It happens. It doesn't mean someone's getting your account, but is there the chance? Yeah, but also, I, it doesn't matter how safe you are. Your information's out there somewhere. It does not matter how safe you are, it's out there. It just is the dark web. People have ways of, like if they're real hackers, hopefully none of us are rich enough that we got real hackers trying to get at us, but they have ways. They can go pay 50 bucks for whoever social they want. I don't know how to get on the dark web. Don't, I don't know that much technology. I watch documentaries though, and there are ways. All they gotta do is pay the right person, and oh here, this lady, she's got about 250 in the bank. She's over in Beverly. Yeah, you want her social and 
Date of birth? Yeah, 75. All right. 50 bucks. 20? All right. Cool. That's it. That's it. That's all they need. They have access. They get, if they're like super good, that's not stuff that we deal with every day. That's more like bigger stuff that we don't deal with and see. But it's possible. The technology's there. The hackers are there. Can we, can we trust the, the security program which I bought provides security like Bank of Bill and all? Yes. Yes. I always that, recommend, I'm of course. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah. See? Look at that. Even the antivirus is a <laughs> virus waiting to happen, a scam. It's crazy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> there are several different antivirus. I mean, I can't really recommend one. It's going to depend, obviously, on personal preference, price range, a million different things. But I always do recommend definitely having antivirus software installed on your computer. Definitely. Did you have a question? I'm sorry. I thought you raised your hand. I did get scammed. Mm -hmm. Sent a check for renewal, one five bucks or whatever it is, and discovered later. But that opened the floodgates for attempts at scams, more from that same McAfee scammer, I assume. Oh my uh, until I got to the point where I needed to renew my, my antivirus, and I didn't believe it. And all of a sudden, I realized just recently that I had no antivirus on my computer. Mm. Until I accessed it through the icon yep. and, and it verified it. There's tons of scams with the antivirus stuff, where because that's where they'll get you to let them remote in. That is a perfect IT scam example. Uh, those pay, those places. There's Amazon ones. There's the, you could. There's so many scams. They could pretend to be that company, and remote in. That IP address is very important. Always call back a number you trust. If someone's asking for that information, call back a number you trust because your IP is very important. That can give up a lot very quickly. Very, very quickly. So you need to be certain that you're working with a legitimate person and company when doing that. So call a number you trust. I, don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving my IP to someone calling me. Let's say that. If I can't verify who I'm talking to, I don't want to do that. I've never given my IP to someone over the phone as uh, yet. Yet, it's always a yet. Okay. Yes. You do. Exactly. So that is what senior tech safety is for. How would you know? How would you know what an IP address is if someone doesn't explain it to you? So you didn't grow up with this in school. So what an IP address is, is if you're on your computer and you go to the start menu and you go to your computer settings, basically, or device settings, whatever kind of general settings you have, you're going to probably be able to find the IP address in that area. It's in your settings of some type, the device well, settings. Why would I want to do that? Hmm? Why would I want to do that? Well, that would be if something was wrong with your computer and you needed help. Someone could take that information, remote into your computer, and assist you. There are companies in legitimate places, Microsoft and Apple, they have ways of doing that, where they remote into your computer, they'll take over and fix a problem. So, yeah. But there are people and scammers who will pretend to be Microsoft or Apple. Oh, you have a, a virus and I'm here to fix it. Let me just get that IP address. And that's, that's all they need to, oh, I keep knocking that over, sorry. That's all they need to be able to get in. So also, regularly update your software. Again, how, do you know where to update your software? If no one tells you how or where to update it? I, this is all so crazy to me because these things are requirements and necessities, and it's just expected that everyone should be able to just go do it. Just figure it, just go to the website. Just go, you know, update your software real quick. What? If I said that to my mother, she would be like, what? That's what do you want? Right what? Now. What do you mean? Exactly. This is why I, I do this is because how would you know? No one's going to know that if they're not taught or didn't grow up with it. So updating software, again, is going to be something in your settings. Usually it says software update or... Uh, device update, update of some sort.
but your software update, you want to make sure those are regularly updated. It's on everything. So when, when something pops up on such and such a website, says you need to update the software, you're recommending it to be done? Mm, no, not on like random websites. Just your home computer, like desktop. Okay. Not on a site, not on anything. So that's a Microsoft product. Or your phone. Okay. Like I could go to my Apple phone and go to my settings and pull up uh, my you software. No, that one, you don't need to update the settings on that. You know, and you know what? Today I brought my paper. I have like an easel I usually set up and I flip through my poster boards. I got fancy today with the PowerPoint, but I have that in the car. You know why? Because sometimes technology sucks. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it makes things worse. And we're so reliant on it now. Companies and businesses, we're completely 100% reliant on technology. If the computers go down at work, guess what? We're closed. <laughs> we can't do anything. We're closed now because we need technology. We can't do anything without it now, and it's moving so quickly. Now, don't even get me started, we have AI coming out. That adds a whole new level to the scamming world. Three seconds of your voice, a three second clip, your voicemail, that's your voice. Hello, you've reached, boop, that's it, that's all they need. Now they can take a picture of you and make it talk with your own voice. There's gonna be a point where you don't even know who you're video chatting with. You could be looking at someone having a conversation. It might be AI. It might not even be a person. Yeah? I called my bank, and they said I didn't need to verify who I was because they recognized my voice. I'm Roy's technician. I just now made a Fidel. Yeah. That they were going to overcome that. Oh, uh, yeah. I told you. As technology grows, the scammers are growing right with it. It's all coming out so fast now. We are at a point where technology, what we're witnessing is like just groundbreaking, obviously. Just the, like what I've grown up with, what I've witnessed oh, like from what it was to just, you know, 30 years, just the past 30 years. It's insane. And now AI is adding a whole new level of who knows, but you've got the filters, you've got the, all these things that can alter your face, alter a picture to make it talk. You could pull up a picture of someone that you love that passed away and have them blinking and smiling at you, with a, all with a filter. Take a picture of that picture and it'll look like they're looking at you. Go ahead. The, um, are, are the genealogy sites safe? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I mean, that's a personal choice. That would just be a, I gotta get this out of here. <laughs> That's just a personal choice, honestly. I did it with my mother on one of them. I don't know, but now I feel weird, because now your DNA's out there. You know, it's just kind of weird. But yeah, I did it. I get emails constantly that I need to unsubscribe for, because now it's almost like spam mail. I get it all the time. But uh, well, mm -hmm. my son also, he, uh, he graduated with a PhD Mm. Because he could. And I, I think that's been a good thing. Yeah. And, and, but, but we'll get a Facebook message from a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we normally don't even open up. But if, but if we do, they, they're aggressive to get you signed up. Yep, they do. Because then they have more people to market to. And you were next? I'm subscribing to stuff. Oh. Scroll to the very bottom of the email, and there'll be a little tiny print that says unsubscribe. But then you click on that, and it doesn't go anywhere. Or the application will pop up and say, this might be a scam. You want to bypass that probably to get to the whatever site they need. I don't know, actually. Because unsubscribe, usually, I mean, for me, usually it does lead to a website where they'll pull up your preferences, and you can unsubscribe from all. Um, now. I'm not sure with you where it goes to a blank screen and if McAfee's blocking it, it is, again, everything's so different. It would just depend. Depends on the website, depends on, depends on everything. 
It's all very, you know, situational. That's the thing. There's no broad answer for everyone and for every website and for every email. And for, it's all different. It may be legit. It may not. You have to sit there and look at it and try to figure it out. But they're out there a lot. I'd say all of you probably have some type of a scam email if you have an email account. I just got somebody recently very mad at me. <clears throat> I fell down on some slippery slope. Oh, no. Roof. They were like, what would you call it? Mm -hmm. I'm not suing you, but they're supposed to say it's medical. Mm -hmm. I stitches and all that. Uh, so their insurance company, the woman who takes care of the insurance, said they're going to call you up. They want some information. I said, fine. They're in um, New York. So he calls me up, you know, my name, address, when it happened, mm -hmm. how it happened. And then he says to me, I need your social security number. Mm -hmm. I said, what for? And he says, well, we can't reimburse you. I says, I don't want to be reimbursed. You pay the hospital directly. Mm. I want nothing to do with any of his payments. I said, I don't want to pay anything, and I don't want any money for it. Just he just said that you're going to take care of all the bills. Well, we can't do that unless you have your social security number. Mm. I said, I'm not giving you my social security mm. That's tough. And uh, I said, you can mail me a letter about it, but mm -hmm. I'm still not going to mail you yeah. my social security number. That is tough. He got very mad at me. And well. I said, well, deal with the woman who takes care of the insurance. Good. Good. I said you're not getting my insurance. Good. You do. But you I need to guard it. That. You do. She insisted on. Mm hmm See, that gets weird. If people are so insistent, it just automatically makes it a red flag. I had a wife call me the other day because the husband was too insistent about something with their banking, so she had to call and ask some questions because she had that weird feeling because of how persistent in someone's level of persistence and how forceful and aggressive they're being about getting this information, that's a red flag. It is. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a scam. It doesn't mean everyone's out to get you, but it's a red flag to consider and think about and take your time and don't rush. I wouldn't have given it either. I think that's good that you didn't and if you don't want to be involved. She gave you the name of the insurance. Good. So I knew I was talking to somebody that's different. Mm -hmm. But I just felt he did that. I agree. I agree. Yes. $19 a month charities on TV. <sighs> that I did. It's the, again, situational. I don't. It's going to be. That's the thing. I don't know. It depends on the charity. It probably is. How much of your money is actually going to the charity? I don't know. I called one of them and asked them that question. Mm -hmm. You know, how, what percentage of my donation what that doesn't sound like a professional answer at all see I don't know about that one if I called customer service and that was a response I would cancel it I don't think that sounds like a professional customer service response we don't have good well that's good all right so we also want to be cautious with emails from an unknown sender. Never click links that you do not know. So you said that link was from a friend. The person that was over here mentioned that he got that phishing email, but it was from a friend. So he clicked it, but it ended up not being from the friend. So if you see an email that you're not familiar with, and now here's the thing. If an email pops up, you click it to open it. It doesn't necessarily show you the exact email that this came from. If you're looking on your phone, at least, you would have to click somewhere else to find out where that email came from exactly. Do you, do you know how to find out the exact email? When you pull it up, it says, you know, the whole message and everything, but the email usually is a little bit hidden or at the top, you may not see it. On mine, I have to do a drop down in order to see where it came from and who got sent the email. And you have to look at those emails and determine if that's someone you actually know or if you're not familiar with that and it might be a scam. Clicking on links that are in emails is always a little bit sketchy. Make sure you know the person if you're clicking on a link. Unless it's a regular old www.somethingsuperlegit.com, be cautious. A lot of people, a lot of links don't just look like that. They have the HTTPS and they go on for a mile with slashes and letters. 
But those are legit websites too. That's what it gets tricky. Yes. How, how accurate is the uh, Microsoft in identifying the junk versus the legit? I mean, I get, I get probably more than fifty percent of my emails are identified as junk. I was going to say, yeah, I would and assume I that. Probably ten percent of those that are are in still fact, are. I think that, I mean, that sounds pretty good, honestly. If they're getting at least half of them, I, I don't know. And sometimes they probably get some legit emails mixed up into this spam folder, too. That's the thing. So they may. Well, that's, that's fairly rare. Yeah, they're usually pretty good about it, though, it seems. I mean, I'm not, I don't know for sure. I don't know. But it is always be cautious when it's an email that you don't know. And always look for that HTTPS colon slash slash at the beginning and limit sharing that personal information online. Again, don't post about that vacation that you're going on and that you're going to be away for the next 10 days. We don't want to see that. That is it. And this is my little tagline because I feel like it's so legit. Technology is the future. Don't get left behind. And I feel like there's a whole generation right now that's getting left behind. And I don't see a solution out there yet. I tried looking up if there was any type of service like this where someone would help train you. And I know there are places that offer assistance where someone may come and do what you need and accomplish whatever task you need done. But for someone to come and sit with you and teach you, I couldn't find anything. So that's why I started Senior Tech Safety. I figure I am a banker, so I have a little bit of legitimacy to me, at least. You know, the bank hired me, so there's that. And then also, I, I know a little bit about a lot. So I want to share whatever I can. I would, I'm very patient. My mom has short-term memory loss. So I have amazing patience, just not with her. But everyone else, I have amazing, amazing patience with. She's half the reason. 75% of the reason I started this company. I have to walk her through opening a text message or a picture of my daughter, you know, click on the thing that looks like an envelope. And she can't figure it out, I'd say 90% of the time. We can't even FaceTime. I own senior tech safety and I can't even FaceTime my own mother. But I can't teach her. <laughs> she, I can teach anyone else. But she doesn't believe me, I'm her kid. She, does, she doesn't, it's just us. But. This company is partly because of her, because I want to be able to help. I know there's a lot of people who don't know how to update software or just go to the website and pay the bill. And if you don't know how to do that, that's the way the world's going. Banking's going digital, cashless. It's going to be a whole new world soon. I want to thank everybody so much for coming out today. I truly appreciate all of you. And I hope that you guys got something out of everything I said. And if you do need help at home with anything, whether it's updating software, learning an app, what, no matter what you need, you guys can reach out to me, Senior Tech Safety. My name's Alyssa King. Phone number 781-476-3527. I'll give you my cards. And my email is aking at seniortechsafety.com, oh, excuse me, .org. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.